All right, in this video, I wanted to discuss the uh, mechanism of action for a antimicrobial drug known as rifampin. So this will be one of the examples we'll use throughout our class. So rifampin, if we think about its mechanism of action, we should start by thinking about its structure. So here's a photograph of a typical rifampin pill, and then here's a molecular structure of the drug itself. And I show that not because I ever want you to draw the structure or identify the structure. I just want us to recognize that this drug has a very specific chemical structure. And that if we compare this drug to other drugs we talk about, they are going to have very different chemical structures from one another. And the reason that's important is that we know that structure determines function. The shape of a chemical determines what it does. The shape of this chemical determines what target it will bind to and what process it will disrupt. So rifampin is an example of an RNA synthesis inhibitor. So rifampin gets in the way of RNA synthesis. Rifampin stops transcription. So how does rifampin do that? Well, rifampin binds the and inhibits the bacterial RNA polymerase. So we absolutely need RNA polymerase to complete transcription. We know we need transcription prior to any translation event that is going to make the cell a protein that the cell needs. So if a drug stops transcription in a bacterial cell, that cell can no longer make RNA, which means it can no longer make the proteins that it needs. And that pretty quickly explains why bacteria die in the presence of rifampin. So if we think more deeply about how rifampin does that, we can think about the structure of the RNA polymerase molecule. And the way that rifampin binds, it actually physically blocks the elongation step of transcription. Again, this will lead to the loss of the bacteria, the loss of the ability for the bacteria to make proteins. So let's more think more closely about that. So let's look at a picture of a prototypical RNA polymerase here. We see that the RNA polymerase is bound to a double-stranded DNA molecule here, and that within the RNA polymerase, the RNA polymerase has opened the DNA double helix. It's reading the template strand, and it's constructing this mRNA out of nucleotides that enter the uh, RNA polymerase molecule. As this RNA is produced, there's not room for it inside the RNA polymerase molecule, so the mRNA must exit the RNA polymerase molecule through this little exit channel. So if we understand that basic structure of RNA polymerase, what it does and how it does it, Right? We can then think about, well, where on that RNA polymerase molecule does rifampin bind? And we find out that rifampin binds right here, clogging this RNA exit channel. And so, if we, again, we think through the process that this RNA polymerase molecule has to perform, we quickly, quickly recognize that there is no way for the new mRNA that this molecule is producing to leave the RNA polymerase. So the whole thing gets clogged up and the whole process stops. All right, so rifampin clogs that RNA exit channel, keeping RNA polymerase from elongating the RNA that it's making. The whole process stops, no RNA gets made. Again, we need RNA to be able to make proteins. No protein gets made. Proteins perform critically important functions for the cell cells have to always be able to make proteins. They can't make proteins, they die. So I think that's the kind of mechanism of action explanation that I hope you as a student can put together after you look up some information about how a drug works. What molecule does it bind to? What's the function of that molecule? What happens to the function of the molecule when the drug binds? So it can be really important to talk about the specific location that the drug binds to.
I think the next logical question becomes, well, why is this drug selectively toxic? And we know that selective toxicity means that this drug harms bacteria without harming humans. So humans also have to do transcription. Humans also have RNA polymerase molecules. Why is rifampin selectively toxic? Why does it harm bacteria and not humans? Well, the answer lies in the differences between RNA polymerase molecules in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Our RNA polymerase has a slightly different structure than bacterial RNA polymerases. More specifically, we can infer that the binding site for rifampin is structurally different in bacterial RNA polymerases than it is in eukaryotic RNA polymerases. With that knowledge, we quickly realize that the drug can stick to the bacterial RNA polymerase, harming those bacteria, but the drug cannot stick to a eukaryotic RNA polymerase, and that, thus that is how I, my cells, avoid harm if I am prescribed rifampin for a bacterial infection. So I hope that helps uh, your understanding of rifampin. As always, if you have questions, please let me know, and I'll be happy to discuss those with you on the discussion boards. I'll talk to you all again very soon.